Hello, this is Keenan Park, and this is Wylock 7th grade worksheet lesson 9. For our first problem, we have Jacob, who's measuring insects. An ant is 0.85 centimeters long, while the roach is 2.6 centimeters long. And so you want to see how many centimeters the roach is longer than the ant. Since we're comparing two things, two lengths, to find their difference, we have to subtract. So we do 2.6 minus 0 0.85 and now 2.6 is the same as 2.60 so we're gonna put them vertically on top of each other like this and we add in that extra zero it's a placeholder or it doesn't really do anything actually it's not a, even a placeholder but it's there to make it so these line up nicely so we can subtract so we just do normal subtraction so this becomes a 10 as we carry over this 1. We borrow a 1 from that. 10 minus 5 equals 5. And then we just continue on with the normal subtraction. So we end up with 1.75. So that's P. For our next problem, the price of a workbook is $2.35 and the pencil is $1.15. And Disha buys two workbooks and three pencils. So we want to see how much she paid in total. That means we're going to do 2 times $2.35 uh, because that's two workbooks and each workbook is $2.35. And then we're going to add 3 times 1.15 since she has three pencils. And that's 3 times 1.15 because each pencil is 1.15. So if you do the multiplications first, because if you remember your order of operations, uh, multiplication and division come before addition and subtraction. And so we multiply this out. We get 4.70 plus 3.45. And then when you add those together, you will get $8.15. So you get A. For the next question, we have $26.30 in, in Ethan's wallet originally. And then he buys two bottles of water and a chocolate bar. And since each bottle of water is $3.45 and the price of the chocolate is $4.75. We want to find how much Ethan has left. So we start with $26.30. And then we subtract how much he pays. Now how much he pays is 2 times the price of the water is $3.45. And then you add the price of the chocolate bar and he only buys one. So that's $4.75. And we have to put that all in parentheses since they're all being bought. And so 2 times 3.45 is 6.90 plus 4.25. And so we get 26.30 minus, and then when you add it together, you get 11.25. And when you do that subtraction, I'm oh sorry, 11.15. And then when you do that, subtraction let's see did I do something wrong here uh, this should be 4.75 so then we have 4.75 and then when you add this together you'll get 11.65 and then when you do that subtraction you end up with 14.65 and so your answer should be D Alright, and on the next problem, we have three C cars, and each of them has four wheels. So this expression, four times three C, is the total number of wheels. And so we want to find another expression that represents the same thing. And that means it should be equal to this. And so four times three C, well four times three is twelve, so this is just twelve C. Um, just like that. Next is similar. Each classroom has S students. Sixth graders have four classrooms and eighth graders have three classrooms. So that's 4S plus 3S. And what else is equal to 4S plus 3S? Well, 4 plus 3 is 7, so this gives us 7S. We can add them because they're both in terms of just S. Next, Marshall buys 6P kilograms of apples and puts them in two bags of equal weight and which means that she divides them evenly. So this expression, 6p over 2 kilograms, is the weight of one bag. So what is another way to write that? 
Well, 6p over 2 is the same as 3p because 6 divided by 2 is 3. So we choose b. All right, moving on. Now we're going to use these values of x to find the answer or find the value of an expression. So we substitute in the, the 6. So 3 plus, instead of x, we put 6 plus negative 7. 3 plus 6 is 9, and then this distributes out. We get negative 7, and that just equals 2. For our second problem, we have x equals negative 3. So we have negative 3 plus negative 5. So that just equals negative 8 in total. Oh, sorry. Plus another 5. And what does that equal? Well, negative 5 and 5 cancel out. So then you just get negative 3. And then we have 9.6 minus x plus 2.3. And x is negative 8.5. So you substitute in. And you have negative, and then we put in x. So x is negative 8.5. So you have a negative and an, an, another negative. And then we add 2.3. So these two negatives, they cancel out. Two negatives um, cancel out to a positive. So you end up with something like 9.6 plus 8.5 plus 2.3. And if you do that math, you'll end up with, let's see, point, yeah, you'll end up with 20.4. Mm, let me just check that's correct. 3, 5 is 8, 8 plus 6 is 14. So we end up with 4 and we carry 1. 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 8 is 11, plus 9 is 20. Yep. All right, now we move on to problem number four. Negative 1.7 plus negative 5.4 plus negative x, where x is 2.4. So you get negative 1.7 plus negative 5.4 plus negative x, and that will be 2.4, so negative 2.4. So these are all negative numbers. So we kind of add together the negatives. And what we end up with is negative and then 1.7 plus 5.4 plus 2.4. So that will give us 5.4 plus 2.4 is 7.8, plus 1.7 is 9.5. For this problem, um, you find the absolute value of x, which means that you get rid of the negative sign. So you get 1 and 1 fourth plus 8 and 2 fifths minus 3 and 1 half. So this ends up being all the whole numbers turn into 6, and then we get 6 plus 1 fourth plus 2 fifths minus 1 half. The lowest common denominator would be 20 for this. So we end up with 6 plus 5 over 20 plus 8 over 20 minus 10 over 20. And so that ends up with you having just 6 and 3 twentieths. And then for number six, we have another absolute value. That just means that what we put in should turn positive. So this will be three and one third plus negative three and one fourth plus seven and three tenths. So this negative three and this three cancel out. So we end up with one third minus one fourth plus seven and three tenths. One third minus one fourth is one twelfth. You can do the math to check that. And then we'll find the lowest common denominator. In this case, that's 60. So we get 5 over 60 plus, and then we multiply 6, 18 over 60, which gives us 23 over 60. So your answer will be 7 and 23 over 60. If you want to write it as an improper fraction, that will be 443 over 60. And then now we're going to solve these equations using mental math. This should be pretty easy because it's mental math. So x plus negative 9 plus 9 equals 8. You can do this in your head, but I'll draw it out a little. Negative 9 and 9 cancel out, so we just get x equals 8. For this next one, x, a negative 8 plus x minus 2, or oh, plus negative 2 equals negative 10. Well, negative 8 and negative 2 combine to be negative 10, which means that they cancel out with this side on the other one, which means x just equals 0. And lastly, we have x plus negative 2.8 plus 9.2 equals 0. So negative 2.8 plus 9.2 we can try to find that out. That will be 6.4.
and that means x is equal to negative 6.4 because 6.4 has to be subtracted by 6.4 to get 0. You have to subtract itself. So x equals 6.4 or negative 6.4. All right, that's all for today. Thank you for listening.